Good afternoon. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Gainesville meeting at the Cade Museum. If you are watching on YouTube, please register your participation by sending an email to info at rotarygainesville.org. And as a reminder, please don't forget to silence your cell phones. At this time, please welcome Pete Inwall to the podium for our song and pledge. Uh, okay, so is the mic working? Can you hear me okay? Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Is Dr. Coughlin here? No, good. Uh, Dr. Joe uh, had a patient, he was talking to a patient, and he was talking to him about his blood test. And so he said to the patient, he said, um, I got some bad news and I got some very bad news. What would you like to hear first? And the patient thought for a minute, he said, well, I guess I'd like to start with the bad news. And so Dr. Joe said, uh, I got your blood test back, and unfortunately you have a, a terminal illness, and you only have 24 hours to live. And so the guy thought for a minute, he said, well, gee, this is tough. This is bad news. Uh, I've got a 24 hours to get my affairs in order and, uh, you know, kiss my family goodbye and What's the, what's the very bad news? And Dr. Carson looked at him and said, I was supposed to tell you this yesterday. <laughs> would, you, would you join me in uh, singing God Bless America? <laughs> God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her with a light from a light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Please join me in pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lori had something come up this morning, so Pete has offered to give the invocation to it for us. Then I'll go away. That's not good enough. Uh, let's pray. If you bow your heads with me. Father God, thank you for the many blessings that you have showered on us. Thank you for this food. Thank you for this fellowship. And thank you for this organization. We ask that you send us into the world in peace. We ask that you resolve the conflict in the Middle East and, and uh, do comfort the, those who have lost loved ones. And we ask that you send us into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pete. You may be seated, but I do ask that Visiting Rotarians and guests, please remain standing to be introduced. Jason will bring around the microphone. Okay. Psst. 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 Excuse me, fellow returns. My name is Bill, and I'm going to I'm going to do a, a, an invite of uh, folks that Jack has asked to come. And first, I have Christy Goldwine with the Children's Trust. She's coming here to see Jack. Julie, stand up. I got Julie and Jeff, and they're both from where? Well, Florida, and they're here to listen to Jack. Okay. And then I got Jennifer and Latanya. They're here to listen to Jack, okay? And they're from where again? Howard Bishop Middle School. These guys had dinner with Jack last night, but I'm gonna turn this, well, let me turn it over to Bill, uh, the other Bill, the better Bill. 
Thank you, Bill. I'm Bill. Bill Zagel, and I'm uh, my guest today is my beautiful and talented wife, uh, partner in, in life, Carol. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Greg Young. I have two guests here today. Bill Martin, uh, you may remember him through the community with orthodontics, and his sons are carrying on the fine tradition now with Martin Orthodontics. And Judy uh, Banks, uh, pediatrician in the community for a long time. Many of you know her through that capacity. So welcome. They're here to hear Jack, too. Good afternoon, Tuesday Club. I'm Jacob Rush from the Monday Club. And we have a Halloween event going on at the Hippodrome on the 30th. If any of your Rotarians are interested, everyone's invited. I think tickets are $30, and it's uh, Halloween at the Hippodrome with costumes and drinks and, and uh, a nice charity event. So look for us on DAC TV. Welcome, everyone. It's so nice to have you all visiting with us. And now for our first announcement, Eric Gaudet. Hello, Rotarians. It's that time of the year again. I have been nominated to come and share some information with you about our club's Ethics and Business Award Committee. And as a member of that committee, I want to encourage all of our club members to consider making a nomination for a business or a business owner worthy of this prestigious award. So a little description about this award. The Ethics and Business Award has been issued each year in conjunction with the Greater Gainesville Chamber of Commerce since 2011. This award honors and recognizes individuals and businesses in the community that exemplify the ideals of Rotary by consistently demonstrating strong commitment to the highest ethical practice in all facets of their business. This award is different from the Service Above Self Award, which is issued to an individual for their service to the community, as opposed to the Ethics and Business Award, uh, which is issued for a business or business owner's high ethical practices. What we are trying to encourage is nominations. And to give you some information about the nominations, the strength of this award is the result of the strength of the nominees. Who within your network would be an appropriate person to nominate? Please download a nomination form from DACDB or contact committee chair, Scott Winsler. Scott, raise your hand so everyone can see you. Oh, there he is over there. That's right. And Scott can email a form to you. Although club members are encouraged to make nominations, anyone can make a nomination. A club member and club membership is not a requirement. Our deadline for submission of nominations is November 3rd. Nominees will then be interviewed by a team of student ethic ambassadors from the Warrington School of Business who will make a recommendation to the EIB committee, and this committee will then make the final selection of the award recipient. The award will be announced at the club in January 2024 and at the Chambers of Commerce annual meeting in February. So please submit completed nominations to committee chair Scott Windsor. Scott, raise that hand again. He's your guy. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Eric. And next, Billy Dodd with an announcement. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. It's almost time for the auction for Sustainable Cambodia. I got to have the greatest experience frog gigging, and I'm pretty good at it. So that was um, what I won in the auction, and I look forward to someone trying to outbid me on that again. We need your items. Um, so the silent auction items need to be at least $75, and the live auction items should be of a value of about $1,000 at least. So we look forward um, to tapping into your resources and really, really building a great variety of things so that we can help with sustainable Cambodia. Good luck to you. Thank you, Billy. And now, please welcome our president to the podium, Linda Reinhart. Y'all are good for my ego. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, a couple of quick announcements. The board did have uh, its meeting last night, 
and um, we voted in a new member, uh, Cole Barnett, with uh, Salter and, of course, I didn't write that down. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, um, law firm uh, is our newest member. Um, I did talk to him this morning. He's excited to be a part of the club. He unfortunately had a conflict uh, today, but uh, please, when you see him, welcome him to our club. Um, also, Dwight uh, was un unable to be here today, but he asked me to give a plug. We do have a date for the Seafood Spectacular. It is going to be on December 7th. So please mark your calendars, and obviously there'll be more information coming with work days and volunteer signups for that event. And obviously, uh, most of you guys have, have enjoyed that, but it is, a, it is a lot of fun. So let's um, plan on uh, supporting that event. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bill Stasewitz to introduce our speaker today. Thank you, Linda. Can you hear me back there? Can now. Okay, fellow Rotarians, I get the honor of introducing to you Jack Levine. Now, who is this guy that comes from Tallahassee and knows more people in this room than I do? Well, if you read his bio, you know that he's been the recipient of numerous awards over the span of four years while he's been an advocate for those who have no voice, the children of our semi-functional foster care system. I've had the pleasure of knowing Jack for more than 10 years and joyfully receive his lengthy but highly informative emails. I've learned more from Jack than I have learned from any other 10 acquaintances. I encourage you to get on his list and you will thank me once you've received a pearl, few pearls of wisdom from Jack, or better yet, Grandma Minnie. Jack's five L's for a positive future, of which you have on your table, is an example of that email list. Life, love, learning, leadership, and very importantly, your legacy. If you were to have an older or younger brother, you would want Jack in that role. As a grandson or a grandfather, there is none better. You could not get a better friend than Jack. A husband and a dad, he's your standard setter. To use President Matt's words, he's the example of a do-goodery. There's no doubt that his parents raised him well. But isn't it a role of child advocate, he does not confuse activity with results. He has been unrelenting, chasing the powers that be in the Capitol building of Tallahassee. And when this or that legislative servant of the public sees Jack coming or has a meeting with him, they better be ready. He gets things done, simply put. I reached out to Alan Abramowitz a champion of kids while he led the guardian ad litem for this state for over 10 years. And he had this to say about Jack. First of all, he's one of a kind, and he's always kind no matter who he's dealing with. He first read about Jack in the local paper from the newspaper, Tampa Bay Times, July 5th, 1992. When asked about our child welfare system in our state, he told the reporters, and I quote, the only children's program operating without a waiting list in Florida is the morgue. That one article told Alan that he had to meet this guy, Jack Levine. Last night, I had the pleasure of breaking bread with him, along with a few well-known legendary leaders of this club, Bill and Carol Ziegel. And when I told them that Jack was my dinner guest, they said, sign me up. I consider myself a blessed to know and love this man. Fellow Rotarians, I'm proud to introduce to you my friend and good buddy, Papa Jack.
Whoa. Bill, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know where you get your wellspring of love. I know Yori is part of that circle, your dear wife and your children and your grandchildren. But um, if my old grandma, Minnie, or my dad, or other of my influences heard the last four or five minutes, they'd say, who is he talking about? Oh, I have to pay homage to someone. Would you excuse me just a moment? Please raise your glasses to Dr. Cave. What a facility, what a genius, what a revenue generator from this, from this container. Gatorade it is. I'm going to read you something with your permission that all of you probably know but may have forgotten the words. Rotary Mission. We provide service to others, promote integrity, and advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through our fellowship of business, professional, and community leaders. Congratulations for being a Rotarian. Rotary Vision. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting, change across the globe, in our communities, and for ourselves. And the last I'll read is your diversity, equity, and inclusion credo. As a global network that strives to build a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change, Rotary values diversity and celebrates the contributions of people of all backgrounds, regardless of their age, ethnicity, race, color, abilities, religion, socioeconomic status, culture, sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Wow, 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 what a mission. I want to thank you all for carrying on that tradition. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. My father was born in 1891. So that's not the last century. That's nine years into the previous century. In a little town called Shekhanovich, you've all heard of it, 200 residents tops. In 1905, when my father was 14, the Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, decided that those who lived out in these little villages called shtetls were his enemies. As a matter of fact, there was a bomb thrown at the sleigh of Tsar Nicholas II. It didn't kill him, but it made him angry. And he blamed the people in the countryside. And he created this army, it was called the Cossacks, to rape and pillage, to destroy these villages. Oh, he didn't kill them all. Some escaped, and my father Chaim, which is Yiddish for life, and his friend Benny escaped at age 17. Went to Danzig or Gdansk, got on a boat, came here in 1907. Started a business, did very well. One of the women who worked for him in the Garmin Center was 25 years his junior. They fell in love. Their first date was the grand opening of the movie Casablanca in 1942. My father used to say, 
that was a tough ticket, but worth it. When he was 60 years old is when I was born. He had turned blind when he was 54, which proves that not all bodily functions require good vision. My childhood was reading and leading my father. I don't remember all that much, but I do remember the sessions, which were weekly, of reading to my father from newspapers. Do, do you remember newspapers? My mother's biggest scolding was, Jack, you need to wash those inky fingers. What did I read to my father? Not books, he got those on records. The interest of my father was the, the, the politics of the day. My father never went to school one day in his life, but spoke six languages. He spoke his home language, which was Yiddish, the language of the Tsar, which was Russian, he said, we learned Russian because they're going to be talking about us. We might as well know what they're saying. He learned Polish, took him three years to work his way through Poland. Came to the United States, learned English, sprinkled it in with, with Italian. And then he had a sixth language. That language was politics. He spoke politics in the other five languages fluently. He always remembered it was politics that sent those teenage boys running through the woods to be murdered. It was politics that brought us war and peace, and he wanted to have a voice. So what I read to my father as a child, age eight and nine, was the politics of the day. One of his heroes was Dr. King. Listening to Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. I remember the day. I remember the tears that went through his eyes because of the melody of that message. That influence stayed with me. He used to talk on the phone to his friends. He used to talk extra loud on the phone. I realized why. He wanted me to hear him talking to his friends. I would sit and listen, and he would say, that boy, I'm raising him to be a teacher. Now, there was something about my father. When he wanted your opinion, he gave it to you. What I learned from my father is we can make positive change. In his life, he made positive change, and anyone who knew him respected his optimism and his strategies. So you can say that some of the accolades we heard from Brother Bill today were inherited. In the United States, last year, 3,644,280 babies were born. That's 10,300 every day. That's 40, 418 every hour, no days off. In our state of Florida, last year, 210,200 babies were born. That's 17,550 a month. That's 4,130 a week. That's 576 a day. That's 24 every hour. 24 babies born in Florida every hour. Alachua County, buckle up. Julie, you know these numbers. 2,580 a year, 215 a month, 20, excuse me, 47 a week seven every single day, no days off. And I could not resist this one because I was astonished when I looked it up. Ready for this? Worldwide, listen to that siren. Worldwide, 
130 million 824, 230 babies born in a single year, which is 383,000 a day, which is 15,900 an hour, which is 266 a minute, which is five babies born in this world every five excuse me, every second, I'll repeat it. Five babies are born in this world every second. Now, why do I give you these numbers? Because we are numb to numbers. The word number begins N-U-M-B. But we cannot be numb to the reality that these babies, no matter where they are, what their language is, what their opportunities are, they are our babies. They, chances are, might survive us. Many don't. But the question that I ask, and I question that you ask yourself every day is, what do we do to make sure that our babies are healthier, are stronger, are more educated, are safer, are able to create a world that we leave to be proud of. And you're a Rotarian. You know that you strive very hard for this. So here's my plea. Here's my question. Here's my hope that we do all we can to assure in conflict, in disease, in nutrition, in education, that we do all we can to better the lives of our children. For they are all our children. We will profit by or pay for whatever they become. I'm sure you believe in that. The question is, how do we act on that? How do we create a conversation about our decisions that are made today and tomorrow, and for all the tomorrows, are very child-friendly. One of six of our children does never see a dentist in their life in this nation. My dental friends, the Martins, know they do what they can to alleviate that, don't you? We've got a third of our children who are not ready for kindergarten. A third. And by the way, two-thirds of our teenagers are not emotionally or physically eligible to be in the armed forces. Two-thirds of our children will not pass the test if they choose or would, would choose to be in our armed forces. Now, why does this guy who traveled 128 miles yesterday to be here in Gainesville to give you all of this seemingly hard to fathom understandings about our obligations and our opportunities. Because you in Alachua County have done something very special for yourselves and your children. You passed the Children's Trust four and a half, five years ago. Created an opportunity an opportunity through ad valorem taxation, and hey, I'm saying the word in public, taxation, to invest some resources in programs that work and proven to be work, to work. This is the annual report of the Children's Trust of Alachua County. I hope each of you has access to read it. Christy, it's probably on your website, correct? It is chock full of information about what you're investing in children. And Alachua is not the only county in Florida that has a Children's Trust or a Children's Council. We have 11 of them, including my home county of Leon, including Escambia. Those are the three most recent. But guess what? 70% of our population are made up of counties that have children's trusts or children's councils. I beg of you 
get to know what they do and how they support the good work of those who are laboring for a future that we govern. Through those votes, we are working near miracles and a round of applause for the Children's Trust of Alachua County. Now, there are two entities at the University of Florida that I'm particularly interested in, and I can't miss this opportunity to give them what they call, I guess, a plug. The first is the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. I don't know if you know it. Samuel Proctor, a now deceased history professor, created an opportunity to tell our stories for posterity. They run several different programs different programs on diversity, different programs on history. And I've had the honor of being interviewed three times in the last five or six years by the Samuel Proctor students and volunteers. So if you don't know that agency, please get to know them at the University of Florida. The other I'd like to pay, pay special attention to is the Bob Graham Center for Public Service. You know, former Governor Bob Graham, after his retirement from not only the governorship and the United States Senate, created this body for looking at how we govern ourselves and our civic responsibilities. Friends, again, there are a whole lot of folks in our community who can't name one of their elected officials. There are a whole lot of folks who never vote. But let me tell you a secret. The percentage of voters of age 20 is 20%. The percentage of voters at age 70 is 70%. Now think about this for just a moment. Maybe this will be the most poignant message I can deliver to you this afternoon. In our great state, in our nation, in your community, the younger, the less likely they are participating. Now friends, now that I'm 71 years old, I am of the age where I never miss a vote. Missing a vote would be an offense to the memory of my father. It would be a, an offense to the great military that has kept us as safe as possible. It would be an offense to anything we hold dear in our religious practice. My grandma Minnie was first at the polls with muffins to give the poll watchers in the Bronx, New York. It was a celebration. And four of five of our 20 year olds never vote. Now, friends, if those who have fought and died for that flag and that opportunity to participate, how dare us, how dare us have a citizenry that do not participate. Now, it sounds like I'm scolding. I'm saying, let's connect with them. Let's inspire them. Let's give them the hope that their vote does matter. And at the same time, give our candidates for office the message that one of their many priorities needs to be the future of our children. Our children are not numbers. They're arms that hug or desperately need to be hugged. They're voices that sing, sometimes in sign language. They're sets of eyes which will look at pictures of us when we're gone and judge us for the quality of life we've left. Friends, I'm not here to give you bad news, but at some point, we will have to say goodbye. Legacy, legacy is what we live for. If you believe that, then let's get about the business of making sure that others believe that too. There should be a blank index card on your table. I would welcome being in touch with anybody who would like to receive my occasional messages. It's free for the asking. All I need legibly is your name, 
and an email address. I hope you will take a moment to grab a card or give me a business card because my goal in accepting Bill's invitation was to keep in touch. I appreciate who you are, what Rotary does, and together I think we'll have a brighter future. Thank you very much. Bill, you're my host. Do we have time for just a few questions from the floor? Oh, and uh, Brandon, my dear friend, would you please uh, show the folks why I'm so passionate about this? That's our granddaughter, Julianne. Take a look. Who else is up there? Oh, there she is in her strawberry outfit. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. You can say few. Oh. There's her baby sister, Molly Joy. Who else? Oh, there's Molly Joy with the neighbor's cup. Who else? Oh, that was our funny face shot. And that's the two girls together. Friends, this is about legacy. And for those of us who are graced to be grandparents, you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Brandon, my friend of 35 years. Hello, Jack. I'm looking. I'm, oh. Jean, I'm Jean Chalmers. Jean, how are you, my friend? Oh, I just what a reunion! Love what you've said. You know, I used to run the information and referral services in Northern Florida, and it was housed in the Alachua County Suicide and Crisis Center. Wow. And there was only one name on the direct dial, and it was yours. And if it a child was involved in the question or related to someone. This was the first person we called, and he never once let us down. I'm so proud to have known you, and I'm glad I'm on your list. Thank you, Jean. And once in a while, Once in a while, hit that reply button because I'm a little insecure. So make sure that I know you are reading. Hi, Jack. This is Michael Pellet. I actually was a resident of Tallahassee from 86 to 93. And your name is actually familiar. Uh, I don't think we've ever met, but uh, you were you're in the paper, you know, the, the, <laughs> the Tallahassee Democrat, often up there, I'm sure. Um, but my question is the thought toward going beyond getting a reasonable amount of education, giving an opportunity, because I believe that any human being wants to have the opportunity to honestly make a living, have a family, and prosper like your uh, father did as a refugee and they there are people in the world we see them happening all the time we just saw it in the news over the weekend that if the opportunities were there they would not be radicalized and i think it's just so much common sense to go beyond nationalism and go into uh, ism if you could or would thanks Michael, thank you, and um, I certainly look forward to staying in touch with you because obviously you're a, an important thinker. My first blessed reaction to that is, my God, how could somebody be so desperate for attention and the only way to find it is to hurt a neighbor, whether it's because of uh, racial hatred or ideological hatred. Hatred is such a cancerous growth because we kind of learn it from people around us. And I'm not a psychologist, but once in a while I play one on TV. And the reality is that those who hurt have been hurt. Those who help have been helped. 
we've got to do the latter, more of the latter, in our daily lives and in our community. And friends, we've got to be honest, there are some bad folks out there that we need to separate ourselves from. But also in reality, some of our correctional programs are not corrective. We've got to turn this around and make sure that opportunities do not carry from the past into the future. Other remarks? I think we have a few minutes. We have, we have one more question on Zoom, Jack. Um, we have a good number of people watching you remotely. As well. Wow. So engaging. Um, what are the entry points and where are the gaps that we can look to fill from Deborah Newell? Oh, that's an easy one. The earlier, the better. Let's make sure that Healthy Start gets the services that they need, because we know that the babies who are born today will be reliant on the nutrition and the environment and the attitudes of those around them. Babies don't choose to whom to be birthed, but the question is, do we choose to support those who help them, not only medically, but also emotionally? We're so proud of our granddaughters not only because we love them so much, but because they're being cared for so deeply, sometimes to the sacrifice of other priorities. The other thing about children that I think you know if you have had any contact is they duplicate what they hear. When I see children being exposed to language that, when I was growing up, was called obscene. It was a no-no to say these horrible, horrible words and the meaning of them. And we have children today who are being exposed to that, sometimes with certain loud music, sometimes they hear the negativity in their own household. And let me pick on my gender for a moment. Because we've got a guy problem. We've got a guy problem in this country. We've got a guy problem in this community. I know guys who could name 45 football players, but can't name one of their kids' teachers. Now, that's not to say I'm not a football fan, folks. Remember, I did a toast to Gatorade, right? But friends, what are we filling our heads with? We've got guys who we need to turn into the right direction rather than the wrong direction. And not to say that women are not working hard because they are, but we've got to get our guys to attend to the positive lifestyle that we want them and to not immerse themselves into all kinds of things except investing good time for their kids. And I've got a whole campaign for that that is intergenerational, grandparents helping kids learn about the future. I think that was the last question. Please, let's stay in touch. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jack, for being with us. And um, in recognition of you being here today, we are going to make a donation to the Bread of the Mighty in your name um, as, 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 a, as a small token of thanks. Okay. Um, next week, our speaker will be District Governor John Tabor will be visiting us. So I um, hope you guys will... Uh, be here to support our district governor and hear what's happening um, in uh, District 6970. Our quote of the day is, we worry about what a child will become tomorrow, yet we forget that he is someone today. And that's Stacia Tosser. Stacia Tosser. And the Rotary Reading Safari drawing is 409. 409 is our winning number today. We do have a couple of extra minutes, so feel free to, to uh, hang out and enjoy some more fellowship, but the meeting is adjourned.